Pine Stadium and welcome to our friends from across the seas in England, from Gloucestershire. That is Hartbury College. They in the red strip and they up against the very impressive South African flavor of Halpmakar College. This is going to be a cracker of a festival. You can almost feel an international vibe to it between South Africa and England and the respective schools that are representing both parts of this world. With me is a good friend of mine and that is Sazi Ngobo. Great to have you here in the booth with me, Sazi. And uh, are you ready for this game, sir? You're definitely looking ready for it in the attire that you're wearing today. Very smart. But Sazi, welcome. Thank you so much, Barry. And welcome to all the supporters at home. And I think, Barry, we've really been entertained with some fantastic rugby since this morning. I think just looking at Harper, you know, they, they literally within the last few games of the entire season and this is their final year for the boys they'll be hoping to finish off with a strong bang but oh my god they'll be really exciting to watch and it's going to be quite an interesting encounter referee desmond van Vijk, he gets it off for us and it's beautifully taken in the air there that is by the jp lombard of help mccard through the hands again it goes now back out to vian storm and uh, number eight in the form of Dark, the captain, Ewan Dark from Hartbury. Look at this man run. He's got good rugby uh, presence about him. Having a look left and right, you find that through the form of Curvo Morega. And I give uh, utmost respect to the pronunciation. Also known as Charlie. You might have to refer to him as Charlie when the game gets exciting. Curvo Moraga again at number nine. It's a good box kick and he's left wing in the form of Phillips. Reads it, he's got to get up, keep it in. Horov, the Dupria, half back for half. McCarg got up into the air, won that down on the ball is Grotus. The hooker through the hands again, it goes on to big man van der Merwe. Buxtian as they know him. And Buxtian lives up to the reputation. Sazi, this was good play by Hulk McCart. Most definitely, they Barry. I think looking at Van der Merwe, they actually call him the brick as well, as you can see. It's quite a great ball carrier. And I mean, fantastic start from Hulk McCart. But I do think the key thing here is, you know, we, we know Hulk McCart to be a very physical team. And I mean, just looking at the replay there, a big boy carry, but, you know, it's 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 the strength of uh, Ulrich Van der Merwe. And I think it's just fantastic just coming against Fit and Watkins. But I think Barry, do you think this is probably what we might see from the South McGar side a bit more physicality, utilizing those two or three pods? Most definitely. They've got when you've got the bullets, use them. When you've got uh, you know arrows, then rather don't use them in the heavy fire. Just go for the heavy stuff. And they've got them. Just look at the physique, the presence. Does there's some um, like they say good beef stick there, prime prime South African beef stick here. And look at the body heart now. But heart pretty. They're known for their heart. They're known for their spirit as well. And they won't be standing back for any help Makar if it's here today. So here it's pick and go time. Help Makar body language is good. And so is their body drive, their leg drive. It's getting closer. Good clear out by Divanier, the loose head prop. And referee has said, no gentleman, Desmond van Beek. Just keep your hands out of there. And Benzia will come forward. Benzia, I remember from last year. Gee, he's grown at the inside centre. He was big then, but he's grown again, Sazi. And I think it's probably all the future life that these young men are taking as well. It's really fantastic from their level. But I think, you know, one key thing here from Help My Guard, from a defensive point of view, they really need to start tackling a bit lower, uh, but also tag teaming and also just communicating thoroughly. I do think it's actually going to assist them. It's a rather slow start. They've really been receiving a lot of pressure. Hopefully now we'll get to see some hard running for from them. Well, you might say, how come Hartbury are dropping out? Because Benzian committed a terrible uh, mistake there with regards to Coach uh, Kutsia, he won't be too happy from Alp Makoi. He kicked it into the end goal area, so they couldn't get their five-meter line out. And Hartbury put it back into the half of Alp Makoi. Through the hands it goes now of 
Grace at 10. It's gone right across the field. Hartbury are matching in numbers. And this time it has been knocked forward. And referee Desmond van Veek saying, come gentlemen, right here on the spot, please. Halfway line, 15 meters in from touch and uh, clearly indicated. This is going to be interesting now. There's the rumble in the jungle getting ready to start here because this first scrum here we want to have a look at. Again, when I say first scrum, it's even Stevens on the halfway line and it's a heart puri put in. Where's your money, Sazi? I think it's going to be quite interesting. Um, just looking at the front row, we have the likes of Brown Price, Pisa going against Engelbrecht and Gustav and Van der Mava. Let us just take a look at what this scrum has in store for us. I think, as you can see, first scrum, just looking at the tight head there, um, actually fell on the side of the number one brown. So not just really binding properly. Correct. You know, one thing that you want to do as a front row player, especially as a prop, you want to either just drop a bit lower, but also foot, your foot has to really be composed really well and be able to maintain your own body weight. Just unfortunate there, but let's see what the second scrum has in store for us. Yeah, as said, Brown was flying in on that first one and he couldn't actually get his bind, but did Harper, he come away with it now. Early engagement, but not on the mark. It was taken behind the referee's back by scrum half. And I'm going to get this right. Kuravo Morega. And referee says, you've got to be in front of me, young man. On the 15 meter line where the mark was given and i've got to call you back and hartbury now calling the scrum this could be a wonderful opportunity for captain ewan dark he's got the blind side he's got 15 meters there could he actually pick and go here he's got to get the right shoulder scrum from his man in the form of visa and if he can give him a right shoulder the tight head prop for hartbury doesn't look like any shoulders are being given there but early drive from help Makar again if they're going to have the, the body strength, they've got to control it first. They can't be engaging. And uh, there's got to be stillness on the dance floor before any music can be played. Back it goes to 10. And that is Brace. That's a great kick there. Taken down further by Brace. That's put Hartbury forward. They're gathering their numbers together. They take their time to walk towards the line out. Just breathing in some good South African half out air here. And uh, they're making sure that they can play at this level. Sazi, we got a game here? Yeah? I definitely think we do have a, a game here. Now, Price, even as he tries to feed it in, you know, it was just unfortunate there, but great recovery. And now this is also a fantastic work here being taken through by Malloy. It's going to be quite interesting. Taken back in again onto the form of uh, Vian Storm. I like the look of this uh, fly half for Hulk Makar. Got good body balance and left and right uh, balance when he steps. That's a good kick. It could bounce comfortably. It is going there, is Brace himself. And that's rolled into touch. It's a great kick from Hartbury and uh, putting them right back where they belong. And that's where they were two and a half minutes ago when they had the opportunity to play off their structured line out. It didn't work well. And now taking the ball forward is hooker Jacob Price. Which numbers is he going to aim for on this dartboard? For me, you can't go wrong if you find number five in Erin Watkins. But they've gone for eight, and that will be dark again. And coming through now, they're crashing it up in the middle. This is good play by Hartbury. They came in and coming at pace. The big man again in the form of Watkins takes it further but it's been ripped away by, uh, by Storm help McCarr need to regather they got the wind behind them as well so just nudge it downfield but they seem to keep the ball in hand Hartbury wonderfully uh, organized with regards to their spread to cover defense across the, the page and now counter rucking as well this is good to see from the men in red and playing the ball on the ground is the call from Referee Van Veik, and that is penalizing Dupria, JT Dupria, the scrum off. That was very good play by the men in red. They hit the ruck, they stood on their feet, and they revved their engines to drive it back. I think just unfortunate there from uh, Help McGarda's point of view, Vian Storm, I mean, it was just at the wrong place at the wrong time and it actually doesn't translate to who he is because i mean he's quite a calm dynamic and adaptable player so it's just unfortunate for him and he was penalized there but i think from a help um 
from a uh, Harpery's point of view, Max Brace has really been fantastic. And I think he's playing a territorial type of game. And I think this will be an easy finish for him. And hopefully we'll get to see the first few points onto the scoreboard as he tries and goes for this one. What a life experience to come across the shores and, uh, you know, come to our beloved country here. And as you said, Brace earns himself some points for his school. And Max Brace takes it into a three-point lead with basically 10 minutes gone. But as I was saying, for Hartbury to come to our beautiful South Africa and just enjoy rugby and the friendship, and I know that they've had a fantastic time here, and they were looking forward to coming back. I know many of our sides go over there as well. But for these youngsters, these are what you put in your photo album for a life. Absolutely. I think, Barry, you hit the nail on the head there. And it's quite interesting because the teams that you're seeing here, this is actually not the first team from a Harper's point of view. All the first team players are playing for the international sides, like the likes of Ruben Collins. He's actually playing uh, for Wales at the moment and is at a lock. So these are last year's students. They, they will be the second and the third team, um, as also the other team is actually playing down at Kersney. So it's it's literally, they, they are called the Leavers. So th this is literally their last uh, opportunity for them to play as brothers and just to enjoy a good game of rugby. So it's fantastic for them and the experience, they're loving it. Some of them actually said they wish they could see the big five in Santin. I was like, you're taking a bit of a luck <laughs> there. <laughs> but it's fantastic to see. Yeah. Well, they've seen the big five here in the form of the Help Macar men. You've got the elephant drive, you've got the run, you, you name it all, because the strength here from South Africa in the form of Hulk Macar is huge. It's still going, it's 20 meters, it's 25 meters. And Hulk Macar body heart is good. Don't pull that to ground, it's still going. This could be a driving trial of some 50 meters. And that is what you want to see. That is where we actually get down. We call the, the Jeep and you get down and you rev that engine, you get the mud wheel spinning. You get splattering all over as you just hoi left and right and you go straight forward. And that is not been seen for many a time where you drive some 40 meters to eventually go over in the far corner. And well played help my car. That is taking your structured practice lessons that you've worked tirelessly on for hours in preseason. And then you come and put it on the dance floor here and it turns out to be music. I think it was such a synchronized dance movement there. I mean, just looking at the likes of the captain, J JP Lombard there, you know, just putting that structure together and getting cringe, uh, whom they actually call Springs. You know, it actually comes from Springs as well, which yeah. is kind of interesting. But just look at how the synergy within the forwards, just to get that more going. You know, it started off with uh, Gustav as the hooker, just feeding that ball. That was just a fantastic, well-worked and well-synchronized team effort. And they were actually assisted. Uh, to get that one and the conversion is over as well fantastic work from help McGar and I think we did speak about it Barry they are utilizing that physicality again and help um, and and uh, Harpery if they're not really careful it might actually cost them the game they just need to get a bit lower from a defensive point of view and just communicate and spread out a bit more well uh, you know it's like having a South African bra place help McCarr have coined the voice onto it and they've actually had a, a taste of it now, and I'm surely they've read the way to play the game against Hartbury. Now, let's have go for some more balls. Now, Hartbury, number four, taking it on further is Cal. But he's been driven back, exactly what we've been talking about, the physical presence of Half McCar starting to stack its ground. The tackle was made by Devanier. Can't blame him, he was looking at his man. And now picking up and going and trying to take all tackle backward as Divinia yet again. My apologies, that would have actually been De Klein, De La, De Langer, that actually made those two ferocious tackles. Well done to you, number seven. And that's a clever kick as well for Hartbury. Just turn the big men around of Half McCart, get it 30 meters and get us down into the 22. As you can see, Hartbury still making their way to the line at Help McCarr already there. They, their engines are pumping, especially after that trial of 40 meters and the kick of um, Storm to add to the 2.73 lead they now have after 14 minutes on the clock that have been played. But Help McCarr have to win their line out now. Up it goes, goes to the back in the form of Molloy. 
He's made sure it's secured. He's getting the, the help McCall called to let's drive it out of here. Storm is waiting. Use the elements. Get it onto the boots. Use the wind that you've got behind you, help McCall. Thank you for listening. Dupria, as he makes sure that he box kicks that into touch and back onto the halfway line. I think fantastic style of play from both these two schools. Um, just looking at, you know, from a Harper's point of view, they, they're all about the territory type of game. And uh, this is exactly what um, the head of the academy, Mr. Wayne Thompson, was actually emphasizing with the likes of Mr. Wood, the, the technical team. All they want to do is utilize the wind. I mean, at the moment, we do have a wind moving from the northwest, you know, coming through to the field. So they want to do that and utilize the wind and get the ball down to get out of their own half. And they're utilizing it really brilliantly well. And now you see Malloy taking it on further. Hard runner, this young man. Now, please hear this rugby spirits. Get the message out there. The opportunity to go for pole, Sarsi. Too many sides now might just have a look at the touchline. I think that is the call. But three points at this stage is half a try. I mention it all the time. You get two of those, you scored a full try. And to take the points now would actually put you into a 10.23 lead. But the youngsters, they've got their tails up and they... Uh, are ready to go and prove it wrong and say, listen, why do we want three when we can get seven? I mean, from a strategy's point of view, think about it. Help McGuard is utilizing the physicality again. It worked earlier, Barry, from a line out right through to a mall. They win, they're actually within a great range, within inside the 22 meter line. They want to get a bit more possession and a brilliant line out once again. What we're going to see now is a is rolling mall, and, and you, there you have it. You called it beautifully, and there you can have a look now. They've got their body heart. Like I said, they want seven, not three. And that's been pulled down, that's been short, and has it been pulled down? It'll be a, it's got to be. That could be very close to a penalty try in my eyes as well when you've got such control um, around it because the only thing that could stop that is puncturing the tyres of Help McCart, and they did that accordingly, and that's cost Help McCart the try, and that is uh, cynical. So for me, that could have also been under the pole seven-pointer, but Help McCart need no second invitation now. Can they find their jumper again? It's beautifully put in. Up goes the big man. Now help McCall. That went to Graham Malloy. He now picks up. He knows where that try line is. He reaches. He actually reaches with that long, long arm of Malloy. And he says, I am here to now put that ball down across the white line and score the five pointers for help McCall. Yep. Uh, driving more, working well. I think this is a true example of if it works, do it over and over again. And I mean, kudos to Moshati Molloy, the head boy actually of 2024 at um, Help Magar, you know. But I mean, it's all about teamwork. You know, just looking at how there's one thing I'm really loving about uh, is Gustav. And they call him Goose for a reason. He's actually quite a clinical hooker. I mean, think about it. He's constantly going for the same line out why he saw now that actually Harper is trying to sink them in what did he decide to do just get the ball down spread it back to the left hand side and once again they were just brilliantly executed and once again they're rewarded with the try fantastic work from a help McCarr's point of view yep fantastic play you can say again that trick was almost charged down it was like a Cheslin Colby effort from Hartbury but uh, no one's going to stop race from adding on the uh, sorry storm from adding on the two pointers and it now goes to 14 points to three, and we've got 12 minutes left to actually uh, enjoy in this first half. Back we go to Brace, and he now has got to get some snow onto this ball. Hang it up in the air. Help McCarr have got underneath the, their kicks beautifully. Up it goes again, and look at just what I've said. That's taken by Ty Axe. He's the second center for Help McCarr. He was lifted and soared into the clouds to secure that. Here goes our Malloy again. Having a good game. Also with him is Delange. He's made some great tackles and in the tight loose, he's physically present. And that's dance work there. That looked like Van der Vestesen on the far side. Now they're starting to get going. Peter Muller, he's been quiet, but I remember him from last year as well. He, he's, he's got spoot, and if they can give him some space, very clever kick by Vion Storm. This has just got to bounce once, twice, but Harper, he tackled in the air. Is the referee going to call that? 
Ari picked up a captain and beautiful tackle from a tight head prop in the form of Van der Merwe. There's the Brick Buxtian. And that could go back to the earlier call of tackling in the air. And referee picking that one up and saying, right, Hartbury, time for you to get yourselves out of your danger zone. I think fantastic call there by the referee, Francis Node. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's just unfortunate that they actually uh, lost that ball in the air there. Just, you know, a clinical bounce, but nonetheless, fantastic work from a help Makata's point of view. Just looking at that bounce, you know, it's just a bit too eager there from Leroux. Uh, but great work there in terms of recovering the ball from help McGuard. They just need to really be a bit more alive if defensively because it could have also lost that ball should that tackle didn't go in earlier. So uh, just hoping that they find their groove and get back into the normal style of play, which is hard running and just spreading the ball a bit more. Don't write this hard for his side off because there's plenty of fire in these red jerseys. It goes over to the back now through to number 17. And as you can see, that's... Beach Bailey that's come on and he's there making his presence felt. That's a beautiful running line from uh, Cobb and he takes it on for them up to the halfway line. He runs into a bit of a help McCall brick wall. Once again now uh, it's Harrison Brown taking it on further. Bring it back please. Says uh, Coravo Moraga the scrum half. Recycle not going anywhere. It's actually a full stop at the moment on the centre spot. Brace now using his intelligence. Back it comes all the way to Van der Vestesen. He tries to dance himself out of there. Having to regroup. Grotus is the man at the back. He's playing the scrum off position. Taking it on further now. That looked like Kricker. The big man standing off. But that's it. Get the ball on to um, Storm and let him get it down the field for you. Hartbury, a long pass across field to Phillips. Tom Phillips on the left wing. But just look at how Help McCarr are closing the space. And that could be judged in the tackle, early tackle on the player when he realized he was in trouble. And if anything now, line out time or scrum time. It's line out time that they say it's worked for us twice, as we've said. It's going to be three in a row. But they definitely need to change their strategy here. Going for the third man here, I think might be a bit too risky. They need to play the first man, then try a different ball, bring it back to the right-hand side because what's, what, what, what Harper is probably going to opt to do for here is actually just sink the entire uh, mall down and actually just cut it off completely. Or alternatively, just go for the long man here and utilize it. I think you could, could also see a quick drive from here, get the numbers in. They're waiting. There's the man Crotus again. The body heart is good. Hartbury, good call. The body heart is a bit upright. It's just a simple collapse. There's nothing there that referee can actually penalise. And it's a turnover. And Hartbury, we take our caps off to you, gentlemen. That was meeting fire with fire and help Macar. A bit casual there. They thought that this is going to be easy. We've done it from 40 metres out. We can surely do it from 30. And numbers weren't synchronized numbers were not together and that gave Hartbury the opportunity to come through and splinter up the help McCard drive and I do think Barry we spoke about it earlier like you can't keep going to Christian again because Harper has actually picked it up you know so even if you're going for for Christian Tonkin what you want to do there is at least get the ball to him and just spread it out quickly mm -hmm. to the back line because they've seen it now that they want to utilize that I mean they've got the likes of Ty Axe and LaRue there you know, those are really some really strong Barky men who were hoping, just you like Molloy gets it now, beautiful try there by Molloy. Oh, there you can go, sir, because there, you did so well, Hartbury, to actually counter drive the line out, but then it almost sort of uh, a bit casual in the sense of, oh, well, we've done that, and now we just put the ball in and we'll kick it out, and then help Makar said, nia, 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 nia. Sorry about this, gentlemen. We should have scored from the line out. We are now a little bit uh, fired up and uh, we're actually disappointed in ourselves. Let's put it into R for race. And did they do that with their scrum? Most definitely. A great counter ruck where the ball actually came speedily to the back man. And that person at the back waiting for it was the ever present Malloy, who needed no second invitation. Nor does this young man, Vian Storm. Let's hear the click of the ball. No, it was a 
dull sound and you could hear that and I um, feel strongly about that. When it's a dull sound, you know it's going to be a voor voor or to the side of the pole. Sazi uh, laughing and saying, listening to the click of the ball. Eh? I mean, just looking at it, you know, here from, just looking at the replay here from a uh, Strum's point of view, you know, fantastic work there by Gustav again. But, you know, it was an easy ball there for the head ball currently, uh, Moslati Moloy, just to get that ball. But, you know, from a front row's perspective, Engelbrach, Grotius and Van der Merwe are just really uh, working well together in the front there. And I think that was a fantastic Strum that has won and fantastic award uh, in terms of securing the try. Help my car doing the basics properly. JP Lombard getting up beautifully as a number five block in the air there. And that's it. Onto the boot of Dupria. Putting it down onto captain from Hartbury. But uh, players in front of the kick is the call. And uh, referee now saying you're in front of the kick. And that's why I've got to bring you back now for the offside penalty. And this is what Harper need with five minutes to go. They'd score 19 points to three on the scoreboard with the help McCarr keeping the Johannesburg uh, supporters uh, well entertained. Yeah, and Harper now nudging it forward at good 20 meters into the 22 meter area of help McCarr. They would love to be seeing their three pointers change to as 10 just before half time. Do you think it's possible now, Sazi? Four Any, minutes left. Anything is definitely possible here, Barry. I do think from a forward's point of view, they just need to drop that ball a bit more and just get the ball to the fly half here and just spread the ball far out. And as you can see here, just setting up the structures and just opting to possibly take another pick and go, which is a great ball there. I would like to see more from their captain, number eight, Dark. He's a big man, and so is this cob who comes through at pace at many a times. He comes through with fire. But here we get Peter Muller again. I'd love you, everyone, to see Peter Muller just be given the athletics track of, on the rugby field of clear space. He can motor this young man. And beautifully positioned there was Lewis, Hayden Lewis from Hartbury. He's going to put it back. But this is going to leave Help McCarr with a sniff of another try. And you might say, how can you call that when it's on the 10 meter line? Because if I remember about 10, 15 minutes ago, they won their line out and drove at 40 meters. So can they replay that script? This is what they surely want to do now, just to go into half time and capitalize. Up it goes from Crotus, he puts it in. Malloy at the back, coming around, numbers are regrouping, body art is good. There is Dark working hard, the captain for Hartbury. Trying to hang on, he's keeping his position, not losing his bind. Referee saying, now nah, get it out of there, we've got to start using it. And straight away, Dupree does just that. Benzie and a long pass out now to Van der Vestazen. This is a chance for Kuta to have a run. But turnover ball it is, and well done play there from uh, Armstrong, the second centre of Taken up further by Lewis from Hartbury. Armstrong and Lewis working well together. But help McCarr closing it down. I've been so impressed with Van der Merwe, the brick. He's done well this afternoon, Sazi. Even on defence there, you see him working hard as a tight head. And he's really strong. I think, Barry, you've literally just articulated really well there. And it's going to be hard to close him down because he's such a great ball carrier. But I do think there's one thing that Price needs to do, you know, as his opposition uh, hooker there. He just needs to literally, it's like a man-on-man -man marking. There's one key thing that you do with such a bulky uh, hooker. You need to get him on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side, but just go a bit lower. Literally one hit will literally get him out of the game there. And what I think is really contesting really well is uh, Hrotias there. Like he's such an entertaining player to see. But I do think, you know, it's also going to be quite interesting from a Harper's point of view if they will be able to respond in the next two minutes. They've got to win that line out. Malloy says you've got no ways, but it's our ball and it was put in by Hrotias and uh, taken with a one-handed tap over by Malloy at the back. Here it comes again, out the hands of Storm. Across there as well was LaRue, the right wing. And here's Muller starting to use that, that uh, body leg drive of his and it's knocked forward, unfortunately, and going to ground. 
and Hartbury, credit to you as well. A few hands on the hips as the, the men from Hartbury are making their way to probably the last scrum of this first half. They're in no rush, they've got to put in and they can actually uh, get ready to having that halftime chat, hopefully halftime refreshments and just saying, come on chaps, we've got the wins behind us in the first half and uh, we can come back at this healthy Help Macar side. I think fantastic side here from Help Macar to literally showcase some entertaining rugby. But Harpuri just needs to try and respond a bit more now from a clinical point of view. You know, there's just one thing that's just not happening for them. They're not playing enough phases and, you know, far beyond phases, it's almost as if they're not communicating uh, on an offensive point of view. Defensively, it's getting a bit better and it's really great to see what they're putting in together. And by the way, you know, this doesn't phase me. You know, they're part of the top three schools in all of England. Yeah. You know, they've produced some quality rugby players cool. and this is literally their second and third team. And you can still see the level of quality within them, but help Makar from a South African's point of view, they're really representing us really well. And as right now, they really picked that ball up. And well played again there by Delange. Gee, he's been impressive. Through the hands, Benzia now. For the cross kick, is it the right kick? Is it the right choice? There were three, four against three, and the skills of uh, Help Makar should have carried them over the line there. Well, referee, and that is Desmond van Veek. He says, gentlemen, it's time to actually go and get some ice. It's time to go and get some refreshments. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you're watching around the country, I hope that you do exactly the same. Don't forget, South African Saturday afternoon, rugby time. It's going to be on the big screens here. It's going to be on your television screens when our provinces and clubs get into action. You go, South Africa. You go, Sharks. You go, Stormers. You go, Bulls. And you go, Lions. Wherever you are, come to St. Stidians and enjoy the second half. We're going to get something now. See you shortly.
The sun's out. The crowds are out. The fires are lit. We back for the second half, and that is help Makar getting it started again under through Vian Storm here at the St. Stidians Festival. A beautiful kickoff and through the hands again of Storm. Out it goes wide. Then it goes on the wide channel. There's Krotus taking it up the hooker. Taking it to Hartbury. And this is the way to play the game because Hartbury could be off sides in the middle of the park through the hands of Benzian. Out it goes to Ty Axe. He's the next man. Peter Muller. Have I going to get the chance? Molloy is the man that can also run. Just watch this man beat off. It's going to take more than one Hartbury man, and it does so in bringing him down through the hands again of Dupria. Look at the big uh, Brick Buxtian van der Merwe. His body leg drive is superb to this afternoon. It's pick and go time for Help Makar. It has to be. There it goes again in the form of Delanga. Slow down, just keep composure. Molloy is the man to come. Is he going to try and get a third try? Is this turnover ball? It's tackle ball, so let it go. Help McCall form numbers around. The big man picking up, and there's DeLunger yet again. He's the man taking it on further. It's turnover ball, and it's exceptionally well done. That looked like it was uh, Williams that did that for Hartbury and takes the pressure off. An encouraging start there, Sazi, but uh, just shows you one lapse in concentration and it spoils the, the final outcome. And I think it's just rather unfortunate, just switching off slightly later within the second half. But I mean, it's still early days, Barry. Uh, I do think the boards are just trying to find their groove, just like how Stella found her groove back. And I do think, you know, it's going to be like that with Help Magar. One key thing that they literally specialize is, hence that's why they call their brain Rias, which is the brown giants. You know, they really love rugby and they're giants. They're really strong. And we're really going to be seeing some fantastic rugby now in the second half as they go into this more here. Right, through the hands again of Dupria, and then Storm. Out it goes to uh, Muller on the far side. He's come off his number 11 line and joined the right-hand side. There's his right wing in Tian LaRue going to ground. Back again is Dupria. Benzi and his numbers here, and their numbers. Out to the big Lombard, the lock. And here you've got the hard-running Sixer in Krecha. Good play. Grotus is there as well. He, the hooker, clearing out and covering up. He has Delunga again. You've heard mention his name many a time this afternoon. Superb effort from the young man. Slow it down. Kick it into the corner. Win your line out. Take your Sierra pointer. Well, at this moment, it's going to be quite interesting if will they opt to go for another line out here or actually take the three. But, I mean, they're within some really good range. But I do think now, Barry, there's one key thing that they need to do. Change strategy for your line outs. Don't go for the two man. Don't go for the fourth. Either play it long or play it short or produce something special in order to get over the game line here. And I mean, even as you look at the highlights here in terms of how they receive this penalty, completely offside, just fantastic work there. It's interesting, even Peter Muller, the left wing, was standing in the front of the line out so he can become a leg driver. And here goes the help my car Jeep. It's full throttle, it's full tries, it's full five points. It is now going to be an opportunity for a seven-pointer, but that's the way to play. Keep it simple. And the man getting up there, that looks like one of the front row men again, and uh, we'll tell you right now, was that Buxtian? Because he deserves it if any man does. No, it's just somebody that deserves it is uh, Jaden Kricker. Zayden Kricker. He is also you might not have seen Kriha. He's been present throughout the entire game. He's the man that gets working in all those dark alleys. He does all the hard work as Zayden Kriha. You saw him have a run down the touchline and open play. And well done, Mr. Kriha. Been right in the engine room and uh, scoring that superb try. Here is Storm. There's the two-pointer. Good effort there by Half Makar. And I think this could be... A little bit of motivation for the team from Johannesburg. Most definitely there, Barry. I think even as we're going to, just looking at how the trial was actually made, we did speak about them trying a completely different uh, lineup pattern, and it actually worked. You know, just getting that ball in and just sucking everyone in there, and then eventually just those leg drives. I do not know what these guys are doing, but they're really doing it really well in terms of their physicality and their leg drive.
It's all about body height, and then coming onto the field there now is Tristan Faniekirk in Jersey 21. Yeah, we go again. That looked like Rotus taking it on. And then you've got Tristan Faniekirk now taking over at scrum half. Dupria had a good game. And Tristan Faniko getting his opportunity with the scoreboard reading 26 points to three. And Half Makar coaching staff in uh, Mr. Ditlon Kutsia and Saul Ninaba's manager saying, why not give all the boys a run now as well? And that's the right way to play it, sir. They've all come to this festival. They all want to be in the rugby spirits and enjoy their Saturday afternoon. And you've got a healthy lead there, so let the boys get out there and each have an opportunity to celebrate later. Up it goes. Off it comes now from Lombard through the hands of Storm. Out to Tar Axe again. Now Muller. Can my dream of Muller being given space come materialize? Superb tackle by Armstrong on Muller. Into touch, is it? Yes, now it is. I think just looking at the run there from Muller on the side, I mean, the lad just continues to amaze me. You know, he's currently in grade 12, but, you know, for the level of his physicality, just look at how he carries the ball and how he evades players. It literally has to take about two to three guys just to bring him down. The level of confidence that he has, you know, and also the team synergy. You know, I really love how Storm is making the rest of his team play from a backline's point of view. So it's really amazing to see how he's spreading the ball, whether to the left or to the right. Hence, that's why I was saying earlier, um, Barry, you know, they need to play at least one or two phases from a forward's point of view, then spread the ball down yes. and we get to see a bit more hard running. You see, Vian Storm was also, he runs onto the ball, so he's got the whole back line moving because he himself is accelerating at pace onto it. And that's a huge credential to have as the fly half instead of standing still. But Harpery now, very uncomfortable in that. Some great work there by Forrester to tidy that up. But Hartbury now roll away is the call. You can't lie there and obstruct. So having to do that is Engelbrecht and an Engelbrecht. And referee saying, once you've made the tackles, etc., please keep the freeway open to traffic. Hartbury now. I think from an opening to traffic way here, it's unfortunate Harper is trying to evade that ball out, but it's quite an interesting call there by the linesman. But I do think, you know, Harpery just needs to calm down a bit more now. You know, there are a few points behind. What you need to do at this moment, keep the ball close. Do not try and get territorial here. You know, play it close, play it neat, play it tidy. And just try and push a bit more. Um, that help McCart defensive pattern cause a bit more chaos. Because once you cause a bit more chaos from a defensive point of view, they are bound to make mistakes. Then you get those uh, penalties. Then now you either try to go for the three-pointers or go for the line. So just phase after phase is probably a different strategy they could try and implement here. But a bit better from a response point of view. Yeah, referee Desmond van Beek put on the spot there because it was knocked forward by Muller and then picked up by a help Macar player in front of him. But referee, in my eyes, 100% correct. The closest Hartbury player was 40 metres away, so the offside couldn't be uh, played. There we get the running of Brace. He's been good for Hartbury today. Tar Axe again onto the ball. He tried to stay on his feet there. Hartbury may be fortunate to get away with that one. That's over the top pass. And two over the top because that's into the stands on the far side and help Makar. Now they've just got to get a structure going again. Their lineouts have worked well, especially when they've thrown to JP Lombard at five. And uh, is he going to happen now as well? Just making sure he knows where it's going is even the new replacement, Lucid and Dylan Engelbrecht, goes across to communicate to Grotus and says, let's have a look. Is it going to Lombard again? Short and various uh, line out here, variation. And that time. Through the hands onto Tar Axia, and he could have found touch, but he's found the fullback in the form of Leo Quinn. Oh, Lewis, sorry, should I say? 
This is good play now from Hartbury, taken on by Armstrong. He's also made his presence felt today. In the 20 jersey there is Milan who's come on. And now referee saying as well, please, that's a hard tackle. Put it in the corner, Hartbury. Don't try anything fancy. And just put it downfield in the corner. Leo Quinn takes the ball in jersey 23, and he's going to nudge it now into the corner. Could this be the time for Hartbury to close the gap? I think most definitely. We might see something really amazing now. It's literally like this Hartbury vehicle was literally, you know, not even warming up. But now it's literally like the engine is running. You can see they're running into the ball, getting those carries. And this is what we're speaking about, Barry. Play it close, play it short, a bit more physicality. What is now help McCart doing? Unnecessary mistakes. And this could literally work for them and a beautiful line out once again from them. Right, and taken through the hands of Leo Quinn, who's come to standoff position at fly half. And then also following up now with a penalty of not rolling away. So they've got the second advantage. Captain now is Dark, Ewan Dark, and he now is giving it to Leo Quinn. Are they looking at the touchline or is it tap and go time? All scrum, what are the options here? Scrum is called. Now this is going to be interesting because Help Makar have just been given welcome to the party because they will remember how they scrummed Hartbury off the field. Prove me wrong, please, Hartbury, because we'd love to see you score a try at St. Stidian's Festival. But help McCard know this is their chance. I think they've brought in a few fresh legs here, is the likes of Hartbury. They've even brought in Jim Palmier. He was also quite a fantastic player on Thursday. And he's come through uh, fantastically. But oh, help my God, once again, easy ball, turnover. I guess the heavens are hearing you, Barry. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, and they have because Hartbury can go and score their try in the form of a five pointer to Harry Drake. And Harry's going to be talking about that try on the aeroplane. He's going to be actually saying the day I ran through the Help My Car back line, but what? What a scrum from Help My Car. Solid scrum there. And once again, kudos has to go to the front row. They're really working hard as a unit. And also just the bodily awareness from Matlatsi Molloy. It's like, you know, from, from an eight man's point of view, the way he's pushing the guys through is fantastic. But I think just unfortunate for that pass. And that was a freebie. It reminds me, remember those newspapers back in the day, free for all. And it was literally okay. just a free ball for him to literally execute from a Harbury's point of view. And uh, unfortunately, he actually missed that ball. But just a great response there. And, and I mean, just look at the highlight here from the scrum, you know, fantastic scrum. But look at look at how they're all ill-footed there. Probably that's the first thing here. But just look at how the whole situation happened there. Just unfortunate, you know, from Malloy just feeding the ball easily there to the number 21 there, Harry Drake. And but a fantastic response. Malloy yet again. Look at this man play. He's led his school. He's led his rugby teams. He's led by example. And here, taking it on again, help my card. That was again Engelbrecht. Can that ball come out? Referee's saying nothing wrong there. That's well taken by Jacob Price, the hooker. He took that beautifully away from the help my car forwards, bending over and just picking up what was lying there, waiting for him. And Hartbury now have got the relieving kick here, the opportunity to hit it some 50 meters and uh, can they get Leo Quinn to do just that? Oh, it's a superb kick. It's a superb kick. Got the win behind, and now after that intercept try, 15 minutes gone, and uh, basically Harpery believe, come on, boys, we can go and get another one. We want to take this back to Gloucester. And as you can see, even the technical team there, the likes of Ali Wood, Tim Broke, and Rob Fuller, the dynamic trio from a coaching's point of view, they're just urging the boy forwards. But I think, you know, one thing, Barry, that I'm loving about Harper at the moment is they're just having fun. They are happy. They're literally excited about the South African saw. And, you know, the resilient spirit, you know, Help My Car is dominating the entire first half. But they just come back with a completely different mentality. And it's showing here. So kudos to them. And, you know, that's what happens when you're on tour. You're away from home. Come out here. Have that fun. 
enjoy the South African hospitality. How can you not enjoy that? And then go back to your home and uh, carry on with your season, strengthened for the experience here. Again, the third penalty in a row. Put it in the corner. Please make sure that you put it in. There should be no debate. The only other option could be poles. But they gain for the scrum again. And this, uh, I hope, doesn't backfire for the third time. Go for the corner. That's better, Captain Dark. Now, they've scored recently. But they were the last ones to come across the char line. Hulk McCarr. Are they going into a little bit of neutral on the gear stick here with regards to just being a bit patient at the moment? Just uh, not really getting the, the teamwork going together at the present moment like we've seen. Up it goes again. Dark is the man that receives it, but it has not been straight and Help McCarr now can definitely exit from here. And, uh, and it's just unfortunate here from a Harper's point of view. I mean, you do have that opportunity to try and just penetrate the defense a bit more but i think what they need to do now is literally just you know try and do at least a three-man line out get that first pod out just to penetrate a bit more then get the ball far out they've got a lot of hard runners so you want to utilize the blind side and also create a, a few more men just as they did right there fantastic line out and now straight on to play and that takes it forward now in the form of drake Back it comes on the blind side, working through the hands of Quinn and working through the hands beautifully to score. And this is what we were hoping for. This is what we wanted to see. Help my car seem a little stunned at the present moment. And everybody here just saying, what actually happened? Well, if you stand and watch, then you're going to have points scored against you. And that was off the line out, taking it up once as requested and then hitting Brandt on the left hand side. And celebrations again for the second try in a row to Hartbury now. These young men are definitely starting to give themselves something to celebrate. What a flavorful try there. Literally, it's like mixing all the Robertson spices together. Literally, a great individual effort. I mean, what about that lob for himself? And even the way he ran towards that ball and carried it and even just finished it. Fantastic style of play here from Hartbury's point of view. Now, Barry, the key question here, even as, as the viewers at home, what do you think Help Magar is going to do now moving forward? Because they've been under immense pressure. Do they park the bus here or do they try to actually execute a bit more? Just full credit firstly to Dan Johnson there. He said, Drake, anything that you can do, I can do better. And Dan Johnson, a superb trial. What are Help Magar going to do? If their captain didn't get them together behind the poles and say to him, Mana, enough of this now. We're standing still. We've actually gone into passive mode here. We actually need to get back to help Makar. Let us help Makar. Let's help each other. And let's get play to our strengths and get our energy going again because they've gone a bit quiet. They've allowed Hartbury to bring the game to them. And full credit to Hartbury, Hartbury using the win to get down into the half of help Makar. We can see now that uh, there's a little bit more synergy and a little bit more energy as well from the Help Macar players. It's a great kick downfield. Looks like Axe is under that one. That could have been Van der Vestes. No, that was Van der Vestes in. Hartbury now, they've got their tails up. They want to run, it's three on one. The big man in the form of Cal. Where is that ball? Bring it to me. We're waiting for it is the call. And as you can see, simple knock on handing errors, unfortunately, have uh, cost Harpery from hopefully getting their third try. I mean, just unfortunately, that Ed Lindsay just took his ass off the ball there. I mean, he actually saw the traffic that was coming his way. I think he just got a bit frightened there. But, you know, better, better response here now from uh, a help McGuire's point of view. But, you know, the rush style of play here, I mean, he took... And he had all the time in the world, but unfortunately just took his eyes off the ball here. But I do think they now have to tighten the ship here because it's scrum time again. And we all know what happens when it's scrum time. What happens there? The brown giants are at your face and you have to defend your territory or they're coming at you, Barry. Malloy should be so excited here because he knows the scrum's going to go forward. But he's been left it and it's been left now to 
the back line, but it's turnover ball, and now again, can it get through to help McCall? They won it back though. Ta Ax, he seems to have knocked that ball forward. And play on is the call from the referee. This is what we want to see in the form of Johnson running hard now. Referee will have to come back for the first infringement because play just went across the field. Knocked on by Hulk McCard and there's no advantage to the men in red. I think the beauty of this is literally everything is being broadcasted live on your preferred broadcasting channel super sports schools app where the sports that you care the most about is being broadcasted and i mean the interesting thing here barry is this is not the only easter festival that Perfect. is happening which other easter festivals do we have running at the moment as well yeah we've got the likes of kez yeah we've got the likes of st john's and also kersney all the way in guazulu natal but i do think by far what's being showcased here at st Stidians is really fantastic as well and it's going to be quite interesting to see the home base i play later on today a big build up for that. I think it's the St. Sidians crowds field and Clifton game and uh, St. Sidians. That should be a cracker to end off uh, the tournament. But to what we have here with eight, nine minutes left on the clock. Hartbury now getting it back onto the boot. It's charged down time and it's pick up time and it's fall over time and score time. Was it knock on in goal? Knock on in goal it was and they everything was there there was the stumble there was the rumble there was uh, the arm outstretched and then at the last minute desperation the ball was knocked forward and uh, unfortunately that excellent charge down effort is nullified into zero oh, but fantastic work there by Darius Housebrook I mean you look at how he charged that ball down it's literally like an NBA type of move fantastic work just unfortunate he actually just lost his footing there um, but I think one thing we have to comment about as well Barry is the level of support from our parents here you know they've all come out in their numbers especially since it's the Easter weekend this is fantastic to see and I do think everyone even those who are tuning at home who couldn't be here as well you know this is really a great time to be alive and this is literally where all of the players and the coaches have an opportunity to showcase their skill set and even their capabilities and super sports schools app is literally one of those amazing platforms that you can literally get such fantastic quality of content being broadcasted weekly for you and barry did you know we actually have over 745,000 subscribers on the app and this wouldn't have been made possible without our supporters and even all the uh, guardians and the parents across south africa and this is really fantastic so thank you to you and go see by a donkey yeah we know well caps off to super sport because gee to bring the the festival of rugby which is so close to any south african heart is to actually have it live in your in your lounges in your homes in your schools in your uh, business arenas wherever so that we can enjoy um, South African rugby at its very best and here youth rugby in the form of these first teams even more so yeah you see the front rows going to ground and the referee right on the spot to say collapsing the front and it goes on to the boot now of uh, Neo again Neo Quinn and he's going to take it further down to get the Reds well away from their try line six and a half minutes left now Help McCarr being a little quiet in the second half after a dominating first half performance. The scoreboard's 26 points to Help McCarr and 13 to Hartbury all the way from Gloucester. And they fought themselves back into this game in the second half to make it a respectable 13 point difference. So Help McCarr, can they challenge the line out? They do. Have they won that line out turnover? Looks like it could have been, but Hartbury have picked up the scraps again from that messy line out and now we look at it through the hands it's pick and go from captain he's played a he should make his presence felt a lot more i feel at times captain dark at times he plays the standing scrum off but uh, he's led his troops well this afternoon he's got the ability to take it to help my car like they're doing now yeah they come again so is he taking it in to help my car standing their ground there are the men in blue and yellow a brown and yellow and now through the hands it goes again Malloy is he going to be called back for that referee says play on he hasn't seen that one to come back for the knock no deliberate charge down and just another unfortunate ball there by help McCart. I mean they had another opportunity to finish off with the bang 
But I do think it's going to be quite interesting should Harpery produce another try here and possibly, you know, um, put a bit more pressure. They could possibly come back into this encounter, but I think from a Harpery's, um, from a help Macar's point of view, the one thing that you want to do is now is just park the bus, keep the possession, keep the momentum, and literally make sure that you do not uh, make any mistakes and just let the ball do the work and i think just enjoy it. these are the last few moments as you're playing against an english side so they should definitely look into that now and what i've really enjoyed and that's also what's uh, hasn't you know with help macar they've actually made many substitute uh, uh, changes here and the substitutes are just as great it just needs time for them to gel and just find the flow and the pace of the game so um you know, that, that's also affected just the final outcome in the second half. But full credit to every single coach, giving their players the opportunity to, to be part of this amazing festival and why sit on the sideline when you can go out there right. So why go out there and, uh, you know, not give the boys a chance? So 26 points to 13 is the score. Help McCarr again trying to capitalize but knocking on there and now it goes to Hartbury feed. Four minutes left. The crowds are gathering for the next game and that's going to be a very interesting one and that'll be the Matadors of Michael House and their red and white stripes. They'll be up against St. Andrews. It's going to be quite an interesting encounter between those two sides. I mean, it's also the men from KZN versus the men from Gauteng. So it's going to be quite interesting uh, to see that encounter pull through as well. Right, now the feed again. There is the steamroller scrum off the boots of Malloy at the back. Hartbury the first to uh, react. If you really wanted to get technical, it came off the boot of a Hartbury player into a player in front and... Uh, was only half a meter, but uh, referee said play on. Because it could have been called as an offside. But again, here we go. Through the hands of X, Peter Muller. He's been definitely closed down. Here we go now in the hard running. Look like uh, Dayanti. Using the boot in the ruck situation. Can't do that to get the ball out. Drive through at the ruck time, and now the last minute effort here to get into the 30s as Storm demands the ball and says, give me that ball, I'm going to put us in the touchline area, in the corner, and you gentlemen as forwards had better score. He's done his part now, he's found a beautiful kick to take it about seven meters out, and we know, as we've called this afternoon, Sazi, if they just win their simple line-out ball, it might be a variation in the line-out, they have the stampede power to drive it over and round this game off. Up it goes. Have they won it? Yes, they have. Superbly so. Harpery tried to collapse it on the side, but it, the ball had been shifted and helped McCard did so beautifully to snout score and capitalize on that try. And getting up with it, is that the man Grotus? Or was it bringing in X from the back line? It's X. They look similar, but X, the centre, the outside centre, he had gone to join the line out in the beginning, and he's going to be talking the day he rumbled it up with the forwards uh, from his uh, position in the back line to score a driving wall. I think that was a fantastic driving wall there. I mean, you know, just adding in a, a few more bodies to that actual mall was really fantastic. And once again, they rewarded. I think Help McGarth should really be proud of themselves. They really came in strong and they've represented South Africa really well. But even from a Harpery's point of view, you know, kudos to them, uh, Barry. They've really played their lungs out. And just unfortunate that this Help McGarth side was a bit stronger and a fantastic conversion there. And now take us to the promised land, Barry. If you last final minute, what do you have to tell? Help McCarr going to score. You were wanting me to actually say that Harpery are going to get on the aeroplane with one more opportunity. I think that Help McCarr realise if we can secure this ball, we've taken it well from kickoffs. Harpery have got some, uh, Help McCarr have got some uh, final energy in those legs to run a good 40 metres to score again. Let's see if my rugby guards are listening. And uh, it's a good kick from Harpery. 
over the top and what do I know because Hartbury have now said they are actually going to run at Help Makar and an individual effort there as well taking it forward. This is going to be the last scrum of the match and uh, let's see if prayers are being answered. Let's finish off either way, either side with a, some uh, points on the board. It will be the right way to finish off on this game. Hartbury need it as well as Help Makar. The last scrum of the match. Let's get ready for the next one. Markle House up against St. Andrews. Peter Muller now, he's come off the left wing. He's come to scrum off. We've seen some innovative plays today from Help Makara and varying their players around different positions. Muller puts it in. He needs it. He wants to have a run. He wants to have a run. He gives it out now. And that looks like it's gone all the way out to Kuta. It's inside. Oh, my rugby guards coming to me and giving me the finale try. Yes, they are. All the way from 80 metres out. And a fantastic effort there. Called on it that helped McCall. If they get the ball back and secure it, they could go all the way with positive energy to have the real stamp of approval given to their style of play, which is a deserving victory of some 38 points to 13 at the moment with the kick to come. I think I might call you a prophet there, Barry. Just look at the feed there. Oh, fantastic work. I mean, you called it earlier. I do not know if you actually could foresee the future, but <laughs> nonetheless, the boys actually did it. They literally are called the Brown Giants for a reason, and they've won this battle, they've won this war, and they've finished it with a bang. Sazi, my good man, it's always wonderful sharing the booth with you. And ladies and gentlemen, it's been wonderful having the opportunity to bring this game to you from the St. Stithians Festival. It has been a finale where we see 40 points to help Makar. They'll go back to their homes in Johannesburg, very satisfied with their efforts this week. And uh, Hartbury from South Africa, from all of us here, we wish you safe travels back home. We ask you to fly the South African flag high there in Gloucester. It's been wonderful having you here. We've enjoyed it. And wherever you are, get ready, South Africa, for some exciting rugby on your screens later.